Hey everybody, it's Grim Green back here today. I wanted to share some news with you guys regarding the new FDA Commissioner Scott Godlib and his announcement this morning that the deeming rule regulations for vapor products are going to be pushed back until August 2022. Yeah, he, he and the FDA made a big announcement today regarding how they're handling to things like tobacco harm reduction, how they're handling things like uh, tobacco, nicotine, cigarette, you know, sort of regulation, including cigars, pipes, and tobaccos, and including vapor products, which they call ENDS. It's uh, electronic, what is it? Yeah, ENDS stands for Electronic Nicotine Delivery Systems. And thanks to the Redditor named Cloud Alchemist, he kind of did a too long, didn't read, but he basically said the agency plan, this is, this is cut and paste pasted uh, from the very long article. I'll be posting a link to both the Reddit thread and the big long article in the description to this video, but Cloud Alchemist uh, copy and pasted and said the agency plans to issue this guidance describing a new enforcement policy shortly. Under expected revised timelines, applications for newly regulated combustible products such as cigars, pipe tobaccos, and hookah tobacco would have to be submitted by August 8th, 2021, and applications for non-combustible products such as ENDS or e-cigarettes vapor products would have to be submitted by August 8th, 2022, which is a huge step forward from the previous August 8th, 2018, as opposed to next year. We now have until August 2022 to get those PMTA applications in and through the process. There's a lot of other stuff involved. A lot of the old deeming rule is still there. Things like no new products after August 8th, 2016. Things like having to register your company, register your flavors, register your recipes, um, submit your labels for approval and things like that. They're still very, very concerned with uh, the whole marketing to children and labels and things like that. And they make a point of saying that in the big long document. And I, I, I read it earlier and I'm going to try to find it again. So it says in the middle here, the FDA is committed to encouraging innovations that have the potential to make a notable public health difference and to inform policies and efforts that will best protect kids and help smokers quit cigarettes. To make this effort successful, the agency intends to extend timelines to submit tobacco product review applications for newly regulated tobacco products that were on the market as of August 8th, 2016. This action will afford the agency time to explore clear and meaningful measures to make tobacco products less toxic, less appealing, and less addictive. For example, the FDA intends to develop product standards to protect against known public health risks, such as electronic nicotine delivery system battery issues. As well as concerns about children's exposure to liquid nicotine, it also will provide manufacturers additional time to develop higher quality, more complete applications informed by additional guidance from the agency. Importantly, the anticipated new enforcement policy will not affect any current requirements for, uh, for cigarettes and smokeless tobacco, only the newly regulated tobacco products such as cigars and e-cigarettes. This approach will also not apply to provisions for the final rule, which completely uh, with, for which compliance deadlines already have passed, such as mandatory age and photo ID checks to prevent illegal sales to minors. It will also not affect future deadlines in other provisions of the rule, including but not limited to required warning statements, ingredient listing, health document submissions, harmful or potentially harmful constituent reports, and the removal of modified risk claims, i.e. light, low, or mild in similar descriptions. Vapor products don't really use that Anyway, we mark ours with the level of nicotine that it is. So I don't know if that falls into the light, low, or mild for the descriptors. There's a lot of stuff they're really kind of still cracking down on. The FDA deeming rule still exists in its original form, but the implementation of that 2016, August 8th, 2016 deeming rule for vapor products has been extended from August 8th of next year. That would have been our original deadline D-Day hope all your fucking ducks are in a row because the FDA is cranking down to August 8th, 2018. That's now been extended to August 8th, 2022, which buys us time. It allows vapor products that are currently on the market to remain on the market and it buys us time to, yes, get all of our ducks in a row. Yes, still fight against this. Yes, still fight against state and local governments like the San Francisco flavor ban that's happening. But this is a huge 
positive step in the correct direction. I had high hopes for Scott Gottlieb and I wanna thank him publicly now for coming out and saying this, shaking things up. I knew that he would shake things up, but I wasn't quite sure how aggressively he would shake things up. And I guess the answer to that is, yeah, I mean, very quite aggressively. I'm not 100% sure that the FDA truly understood what they were doing in the first place anyway. So it's nice, it's at the very least very nice to have some more, you know, cut and dry, uh, black and white statement on the issue because previously there was there was so much stuff up in the air. Nobody really knew what they were doing. Companies didn't know what they were doing. The FDA didn't know what they were doing. The FDA is woefully unprepared for the amount of vapor product companies in the United States that are probably going to be going through this process as far as, you know, uh, uh, registering your company, submitting your flavors, submitting your uh, recipes, uh, submitting your labels for approval. There is an enormous amount of us. And the fact that this has been delayed until 2022 is only good news. So as of right now, I'll post a link down in the description, like I said, to this full big article. Read it. Read the whole thing. I've read the whole thing. Read the whole thing. And I'll also post a link in the description to the uh, Reddit thread where it's getting discussed. It's getting broken down a little bit further. And some other people have some really interesting things to say about this news for today. So yeah, that's what I got. Just some news, albeit really good news. Uh, I think every vapor uh, vendor and liquid manufacturer in the United States today, today breathed just a little sigh of relief. I saw this news. Uh, my advocacy hero, Jennifer Berger Coleman, woke me up with a text message at eight o'clock explaining this to me. And ever since then, I was like, okay, well, it's time to make an Instagram post. It's time to do a YouTube video. It's time to put this up on Facebook. We have to get this news out there and known and spread it around throughout the vapor industry. I just wanna thank everybody everybody for believing in vaping, for never stopping the fight and for bringing the fight to the FDA. We can't stop now. Now more than ever, we have to continue the fight. We have to continue to defend vapor products because I wholeheartedly fucking believe in them. Sorry about the obscenity, okay? I'm just, I'm getting a little worked up and I'm getting a little excited about this. But yeah, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Links are down in the description. Read them and share them everywhere. Thanks so much, everybody. And as always, yeah, I'm gonna grab this. Let's keep on vaping.